Today on Fight Inside Podcast, we will have Ashley Whiplash Tyner, who is a Muay Thai fighter making her professional MMA debut. Plus, we will talk about Wang, the Joker Kong. So sit back, relax, and Tim, hit it! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fight Inside Podcast. Our guest today is the 2022 International World Games gold medalist in Muay Thai, who will be making her pro MMA debut in the Bellator Champions Series September 7th in her hometown of San Diego, California, training with friends of the podcast, Ty Shea, Tyler Schaefer, Jenna Bishop. We know she's in good hands and ready to make a splash in Bellator, but first rain, she's here. Bring her in. Please welcome Ashley. Whiplash China! That was pretty good, man. I think you got a future in ring announcing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she is a ring announcer, Ashley. She's a ring announcer in your neck of the woods for Up Next Fighting. Oh, no way. That is <laughs> awesome. Well, you come by it naturally. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, there you go. Rain, if you didn't have the, uh, if the, you didn't have the kudos already and the self-confidence, Ashley Whiplash Thiner just gave it to you. Seal oh, approval. You. Nice. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Ashley, Ashley Thiner, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you coming on. You're just a few weeks away from two. your yes. for debut. Less than two. I'm over the moon excited about this one. I definitely didn't think my debut was going to be on such a big stage, but I'm I'm ready, man. I'm kicking and I'm chomping at the bit to get in there. Nice, nice. I'm so excited. We have to get to know you, of course. The first question, I got it from a, a sneaky way I got it. But the question Ooh. is, <laughs> why does your wife not let you use the Stanley Cups? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jenna told you that one. <laughs> uh, um, yes. So I have one Stanley Cup now that I'm allowed to use. And she bought it specifically for me. Because I may or may not have, right? This was never proven. Uh, taken a limited edition lilac Stanley Cup to training, one of my training sessions at a visiting gym, gym I was visiting. And I just never saw it again. I don't know. Like, it, it disappeared. Um, yeah, I left without it. I came back a few days later and it was not there because it was so pretty that somebody decided that it would look mm. pretty in their cupboard instead of mine. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's a shameful thing Very that sad. I have to live with every day. Well, and now it's immortalized on this podcast, Ashley. Yeah, so for that. <laughs> 12, 13 people will hear about it. And uh... they're going to they're gonna see me walking when I Stanley Cup. They're going to be like, mm -hmm, you better take that home. <laughs> that's right ashley thiner obviously you're a character like i said oh, obviously shit. you're in you're in good hands right you're training with killers you're training with great people out there in san diego but yeah. uh for those of us that don't know you because look it's hard to find stats on muay thai fighters like yeah you know because you're fighting in back alleys you're fighting in dungeons <laughs> like nobody knows the records that these like Muay Thai fighters have, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Obviously you're the 20, like I said, 2022 international games winner, yeah. uh, gold medals, but brag a bit about yourself. Who's Ashley. Ooh. Ooh. Um, yeah. So I have about 38 amateur fights. Uh, some of them are pro-am. So I have competed against professionals, which is a fun stat that most amateurs don't have. Oh, that's me. Yeah, that, those you. are my belts. I think I've got somewhere in the range of nine or 10. And then I have two gold medals for Team USA for international competitions. Um, and then I have one gold medal for just the national one, which is the, you have to win to go be in the international ones. <laughs> so you, you have to win a region wide one for USA. Then you get to be the one person in that weight class that goes and represents team USA in these international competitions against other professional slash amateur fighters. Um, they, IFMA doesn't discriminate. So you can fight pro-am, which is crazy. There's only like 
four states in America mm -hmm. that allows professionals to fight amateurs. So I have, I want to say I've fought about seven or eight am uh, professional fighters at this point, some of whom had 30 or 40 professional Muay Thai fights. Um, so I feel pretty good going it. Granted, it was all in headgear and shin guards because it's like, yeah, it's Olympic style because they're trying to right. get into the Olympics and mm -hmm. then you fight multiple times over the course of multiple days. So like three days, three fights, three weigh-ins, it's crazy. But to minimize the amount of injuries, like little dings and stuff that prevent you from fighting the next day as well, they, yeah. they make you wear headgear and shin guards. But I love Muay Thai. That was my first love. I've been competing at, at Jiu Jitsu since like 2020. So, I mean, I'm, I've been a blue belt since 2020. So, uh, I are you, are you, are you, are you sandbagging that? Like if you've been a blue belt for four years, are you doing it on purpose? You know, you're just beating up no, newbies. It's not on purpose. It's so when you don't train in the gi a lot, they don't give you a uh, lot of strikes, <laughs> right? And so for getting promoted is actually a little bit more difficult when you train a bunch of no gi. And then I also cross train in multiple gyms. So my jujitsu gym, my attendance isn't nearly as good as <laughs> my attendance in grappling actually mm. would be if you counted all of my sessions. Yeah, so. because because I did see when I was researching you, I come across Ashley Thiner on Smooth Comp, which is a, like a BJJ <laughs> website, and it shows that you've been kicking ass in all these BJJ events. And I'm like, wait, is this the same Ashley Thiner? Like, so like I'm like, wait, she's a Muay Thai champion and she's a BJJ gold medals everywhere else. Like, I uh, thought so that's blue belt. Where it's it's yeah. blue belt. It's gold well, medals. I don't know. But, you Maybe know. how do you know the blue belts you're fighting against aren't all sandbagging it like you are? Maybe you're all black belts. But we're just, just like waiting. Yeah, we're just waiting for our opportunity to go smash a black belt. That's what yeah. it is. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I got it. I got it. But okay, but how did like how does a girl like yourself, uh, your 115 pounder? No, 125. Yeah. 115? 115. Yeah. 115. So 115 pounder. How does a little 115 pounder find themselves in combat sports in Muay Thai? You know what I mean? And you're in California, born and raised, beautiful friggin' country. You've got to have other things to do. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things to get distracted by, but none of them are nearly as exciting. Uh, <laughs> so I've been an adrenaline junkie my entire life. That's kind of just in my blood. You know, there's some mm -hmm. things you can't teach and that thirst for intensity and adrenaline has always been one of them. I played, one of the things you might find if you Google my name or if you YouTube my name is a couple of football highlights because I did play football, Pop Warner High School, and then I played women's pro football for a couple of years as well. So I, that was my first love actually. Mm was oh. football i it was a very aggressive person i have three brothers <laughs> so, so uh i went from trying to beat them up to beating up other people but my entire life i've just gotten more of a rush from being able to integrate my physical and my mental attributes simultaneously there's something about pushing the limits of both that appeals to me as a person and I think that really latched on. I'm like, oh, I have to use not only my intelligence, but my grit in both scenarios, like physically and mentally, understand how to move my body in a way that's not going to deplete me of energy, but mm. is also going to dominate my opponent. And figuring out that dichotomy is extremely in invigorating if you've ever tried to do it. So uh, I, I'm definitely like, just like a nerd that likes to hit people <laughs> i mean i mean i mean you didn't have to tell us you're a nerd by using the word dichotomy i thought maybe if i threw it in there extra i'll give, you I'll give it away no, no, like, i i like rain that i i like rain that we're like you know just brag a little bit about yourself and then she goes well i'm super super smart but i'm also <laughs> super super athletic and so you know i'm doing the, the highest level of everything pretty much you know so yeah good good i, I like tried it. like every sport as a kid i literally have gone through so many sports like i played yeah. basketball i did track i did tennis racquetball gymnastics like soccer i've tried everything 
But mm. there's something about fighting that ignites a fire in my soul that mm. I don't ever want to put out. Yeah. Yeah. No, for, for sure. Like for anybody that's trained, you know what I mean? Like for anybody that's trained and competed, obviously not at the at even at the highest level that you are. But like once you're training, once you're in there competing, like I'm I'm an old guy now. And I'm not I'm not fighting <laughs> for anything. But like I still go to my sparring sessions twice a week to sure. beat up on the new kids. And like, it feels good, man. And you don't I, like, I couldn't think of doing anything else. Like, what am I going to join a CrossFit gym? Like, it's not going to make me feel the same, right? right. Like, you don't get that rush. So yeah, no. Right. And, and I Rain love smashing white belts. It's one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the, just it the best. It makes me feel so good about myself. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Look, if, if you can put me in the ring in a Muay Thai class against the guy that's on the trial week. <laughs> uh, yeah. loving it loving oh, I think it you can get that guy no problem yeah. oh yeah he's out she's out i'll I'll crush that little girl yeah. that just joined in you know yeah. <laughs> uh what okay here's the thing you you talk about like going into all these sports and stuff like that and as a woman like as a female in athletes uh, in sports competitive sports professional sports it is tough you know what i mean because even if you were the best football player in the country like, like this is there a women's fo football league? Like, I don't even know, right? Like, yes, like the, the WFA, Women's Football Alliance. Yeah. Okay. So there's Sorry. a women's, it's a full tackle. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me teach you about some things. Wait, are they so, paying you for this ad now that you're about to cut? <laughs> uh, you know, they don't have to pay me because they paid me in fulfilling my soul for a number Wait, of you years. actually played for this league? Yeah, WFA? I played for this league for like four years. Wow. Ooh, That's how correct. I found fighting. I was like. So oh. I played for the Women's uh, Football Alliance for a number of years. And then like second, third year in, I was like, man, I really want something in the off season to help keep me in shape for football. So I walked into a UFC gym and I was like, let's take a class because these people are in shape. Let's mm -hmm. see what this is about. And then the guy held pads for me the very first day the general manager did. He goes, well, do you think that you would ever like want to fight? And I'm like, <laughs> that sounds like something I would do. I, yeah. <laughs> so I got on track to do like an amateur fight. And within a year I did, I want to say eight months of training. I did my first amateur fight and then I was addicted. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and for those listening, she's not lying. Women's football Alliance started in 2009, 15 years ago. My God. Would okay. I lie to you? He thought I was lying. I don't know. No, I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta fact check you, man. I don't know. Like, how do I know what's going on? Uh, uh, look up dichotomy while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck spelling it, Ashley. Uh, here's the thing. So, okay. So, but you find yourself in there. And I did want to ask, and this was a question later on. Women's Muay Thai. Yeah. Okay. We have a lot of people. Rain. We've had uh, a few lion, uh, a few lion fight champions. Uh, Regan mm -hmm. Coconut Gowing. She's a Canadian. I know Regan. Yeah. You know her? Are you kidding me? We fought at World Games together. She, oh, yeah. okay. Wow. Yeah, she's, she fights one weight class lower than me. So, yeah, she's a she's like a super atom weight or whatever dude, you want to call it. Yeah. So she came in to World Games with her leg completely torn up from fighting like a week or two before. And That's it was just, right. Like, black. Yes, that's when she took that like on very short notice. She was on our podcast yeah, she, right before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, whatever, let me go win a medal at the World Games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's it a spot crazy. on impression of that's a spot she's on no. impression of Regan Coconut Gowing. You know? <laughs> what can I say? I have yeah. many skills. This is one of yeah. them. Uh so no, okay, but here's the thing though. So we so yeah, Regan Coconut Gowing and, and other Muay Thai fighters we've had on. But am I crazy for thinking that there's less um opportunity on a grander stage for women in muay thai than there is for mma yeah no you're not crazy it's definitely a thing one championship is doing a pretty good job um mm. they've definitely upped the game but no hold on hold on i'm not gonna let you disparage my hatred of one fc like this ashley <laughs> because here's you hate them <laughs> Because, you probably should have led with that. Because here's a picture <laughs> that I actually have for this interview. I get so mad when 1FC has cards. This is their card coming up uh, on August 23rd. Yeah. Zero women on the card, Ashley. Yeah, what are you going to do? And I get very mad because, like, look, 1FC, you're the only organization pretty much on a, on a world stage, a world audience that has women Muay Thai. 
Yeah. You can't put one fight on. It's you could tough. throw a you could throw a rock in Thailand and hit a pro female Muay Thai fighter. Like yeah. just get yeah, them on just, your card. Some of it might be cultural because Ugh. like in Thailand, women couldn't even fight in the stadiums until like a, a couple I years know. ago. Like a year ago. Do you know ago. the very first female that ever fought in that stadium whatever it's called uh, whatever whatever yeah, that stadium like, called and it's it's a guest stadium it's not actually a home yes. thailand stadium cuz they don't let females fight in that stadium yet wow the very yes. but the very first female that stepped foot in that ring oh, Celeste, I the best hansen okay. friend of the podcast she's Is been on she? the podcast oh, yeah so cool. love her she's amazing mm -hmm. she just did an amazing fight her last but kicked ass and and got a great win did that's awesome that's yeah, all. did yeah. you know that also they make females i don't know if this is still true go under the ropes instead of over the ropes in thailand because you're supposed to be like yeah so men will go over the ropes but you can't you can't go through the ropes because when you when you split it you're actually opening all of the good energy from the ring you're letting it out in letting it out the crowd right Right, so you're not allowed to go through the ropes, but women had to go under the ropes when they started fighting um, to like sneak into the ring. Like it's it's a cultural thing, whereas women are still disparaged to a certain extent. So mm. I don't it it doesn't surprise me that they don't have women on the card. The other thing is the ah, God women Muay Thai isn't a huge pool to pull from sure. and the, the higher you go the less women there are mm. right yeah like yeah. i'm not fighting professional muay thai there's first of all i want all my weapons that's my biggest thing i mm. want i want to be able to throw somebody in the ground and start beating them up um i do like one fc's rule set where you can knee to the head on the ground Yes. That is probably my favorite rule. Uh, thankfully, 12 to 6 elbows are now going to be legal in yep. UFC in like November or October. Yep. Super stoked for that one because tomahawk elbows are awesome. That's right. As a Muay Thai, as a Muay Thai fighter, right? Yes. The, the tomahawk elbow coming down. The tomahawks, yeah. dude, yeah. all day. All day. Mm -hmm. Jumping in those tomahawks are awesome. But women in Muay Thai, I just wish there were more of them. I think that's why I'm so thankful and grateful for my opponents in general when I have one, because in Muay Thai coming through, it was always kind of difficult to get fights, like figuring out, fight, I would have to fight up weight class. I fought as heavy as 132 pounds. Granted, I go in there, I weigh in at 129 or 130 or whatever it is, completely hydrated. And I'm yeah. like, hey guys, I'm ready to fight. You know, these girls are cutting to 132 for tournaments. E eating a bon me on the scale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I eat before I go in. I drink lunch water. That way I don't miss the minimum weight. Like Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Got a water load. Tough. You have to just be very grateful for the opponents that you get as a female going into it. There are a lot more yeah. Muay Thai, like female Muay Thai fighters overseas, like in the in Korea and Thailand, obviously the Philippines. It the sport in general is more popular over there. Mm -hmm. Western culture hasn't been as popular, which is crazy to me because everybody wants to see striking. They just don't know what Muay yeah. Thai is. They mm -hmm. think it's a drink on the beach. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so, so it's, yeah. it's definitely is hard to get. Once you get it in people's mouths and people's minds, they, they end up latching on. They're like, oh, this is so cool. Why aren't more people watching this? Right. And I'm like, I don't know. It's way better. Well yeah, but that but that's the thing though. So yeah, like that that was my thing is like, look, if if you're a female and you're in combat sports and Muay Thai is your thing, I don't know. I like what you're doing by transitioning into the MMA because it's kind of like, hey, look, there's there's potentially more opportunities for me there to a make more money and b get into people's homes more, right? Yes. And and also maybe to find more fights. I was going to say to challenge the top level athletes. I think for me is yeah the biggest goal that I have, because I'm always looking for the next competition that's going to push that limit that we talked about. And so to have more females that are also pushing their own limits helps me push myself. And then we find a new type of human optimization that 
at some point it has to cap out. We got to find it at some point. Yeah. 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 What do you do aside? Like, okay. Like fighting is all you do or do you have like a job? Are you yeah, a scientist? A what job. do you do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you a scientist? Uh, like, what do you do? Like, can I, ask? So I, have a, I have a bachelor's in science, right? I do, but okay. I don't, I mean, it's whatever. I just don't use it. Yeah. So I have a bachelor's in animal science, which is a couple classes oh. off of like pre-vet. And oh, I, no way. No, 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 but she I loves animals. Like, she oh, loves okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you can't. See, you can't see all her Emmys in the background. She works in television stuff. So, you know. oh, okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Super I fancy. Know. Yeah, came yeah. into this without the knowledge I needed. No, Jesus, <laughs> Louise, you're supposed to do background research before Ash. Right? <laughs> well, you're good at the background part. No, I'll no, just... yeah. Talking but no, okay, okay, but so like you know, you're you're doing this now, and so hey, you're kicking ass. Like I like I showed on the screen while you were talking for those though, some people are only listening to this on audio, but I'm showing a picture with you with plenty of plenty of belts in your belts back. And metals. Swag. Belts, medals, yeah, looking good. But here, uh, here's the picture now of you going over to Bellator Champion Series, San Diego, <laughs> Ashley Thiner, Saturday, September 7th. If you're buying tickets, I saw you had a reel up there, and it, and it shows you how to use the code ATH yeah. to figure that out. So if you love Ashley Thiner, make sure that you follow her on Instagram. Uh, wait, what is I don't load up. Yeah, your, AJ oh, no, TIE Fighter. You're all good. AJ TIE Fighter. Hold on. Do yeah. I have it here? Oh, Jordan. look at this. Boom, Jordan watch that. There. That's it. Yeah. Right, there we go. You're so professional. Follow her at, at AJ Tie Fighter, right? Yes. And then on there you have a reel that shows how to get, get the tickets, yes. which you know credits you as as the reason why they yes. want to go. Yeah. And if you don't like to watch videos, there's also directions in the link in my bio. So right. if yeah. you like <laughs> words instead, then there you go. Yeah. Um, I mean, if that's that person, they're not listening to this podcast. So. <laughs> I did. I did want to jump back to uh, the fact that I do have a job, and it has nothing to do with animal science. Um, yeah, I've been a sports official for 15 years, so Ooh. I officiate softball at the highest levels. I do college softball, and then I do I officiate basketball, it, like high school basketball as well. So that's my job. Uh, I also have kind of developed a meal prep company just offhandedly. It started as a fundraiser for my fight camp like a few mm -hmm. months ago. And then it kind of took off because I optimize my own nutrition based on my knowledge of science and I'm constantly researching it and making sure that I can hit certain protein, carbs, and fats to optimize recovery and energy levels as a performance athlete because it is completely different dieting as a performance athlete than you would as a regular person who's just going to their nine to five and they're right. trying to get their 10,000 steps in. Like we have to perform every single day. So how do you optimize that? Obviously more carbohydrates than you would think. And then I've used that to cater to fighters and bodybuilders. Uh, as a base for my little company that I do because I was a cook for like six or seven years when I was in Ooh. college. <laughs> of course. No, yeah. what? Okay, so can you plug the business? So, like, do you have a name for it? Or, like, right how did you yeah, for it. say it again? Fighters Fuel. You fuel yourself. Oh, with, nice. my, with my food. Yeah, it's fuel right. for fighters, specifically nice. for athletes. All right. Well, I will go, and it's on Instagram. No, no, it's none of that yet. I need a business license first. Don't rat me out. Oh, okay. really? Okay. Well, yeah, I'm working right. on it. I'm work it was a fundraiser. It was just like, oh, I'm just going to make some meals for people. And then people are like, oh, can I order like 10 of these? I'm like, yeah, I guess. Sure. Uh, well, I work for the tax department, so I'm coming after you now. <laughs> after this. No, just kidding. I'm in, I'm in Canada. We don't even like, you know. Yeah. Oh. It's fine. It's fine. We're uh, good. So, okay. So now here you are going to Bellator. How excited are you to make that debut in Bellator? Like, that's a huge, huge thing. To the top. Yeah. Like, there, there is no proper way for me to convey my excitement. Like, yeah. part of me is still in disbelief that the fight will actually happen because my last fight got pulled a week beforehand because the girl broke her back. Oh, Yep. So a week before my fight, you know, she broke her back. She started losing feeling like in her arms and stuff and then had to go into surgery. 
So until we've waited, I'm like, uh, I'm just jaded. I'm jaded at this point. <laughs> I've had so many fights fall through that I just don't, part of me doesn't believe it, but I would, I think I'm starting to finally get excited because we're like two weeks out, right? Everything's done. All yes. the medicals are submitted. All the paperwork's done. She's posting on her Instagram. So, you know, she's committed. And I, my cut, you know, because it's the first time I've cut to 15 in a while. I cut to 18 for Muay Thai. I've actually never cut to 15. Mm. So it's a, a few more pounds. So I kind of had to do a, a few things a little different. But it is day before weigh-ins, whereas Muay Thai was day of. 118 so two more pounds day before i don't i don't feel like it's going to be much of an issue i'm just going to be a little thirstier than i usually am yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, be having that sandwich on the scale like you normally yeah, do. No, <laughs> yeah just, oh, this is so good I, I oh i remember one time i was in the weigh-in line for wck and i had the little cocktail weenies they were like pigs in a blanket they're like the little cocktail weenies uh, with, with croissants wrapped around them. And yeah, I, was, yeah. I was like, oh, you guys want one? They're like, Ashley, we haven't weighed in yet. I'm like, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> Neither have I. You know? <laughs> so, okay, but, but here's the problem. Bellator doesn't have a straw weight division. No. <laughs> Has anyone told them that before they signed no, your fight? No, I don't think they know. I don't, I don't think that they're aware <laughs> Yeah, okay. I will be the straw weight division. Just put me in, coach. I'm ready. No, okay. So here's my thing. Okay, so A, congratulations, because, I mean, it's good that they have straw weights in Bellator because that's a division they were always lacking. And that's a division that they could easily build. There's so many females in that 115-pound range. That's why the UFC has such a stacked division. And if you go over and take all those 1FC atom weights, which aren't really atom weights because they're not dehydrating so technically they're probably 115ers anyways right bring those girls over and send them into bellator and create a 115 pound division sure right yeah here i mean here. yes for me i was i was telling them that i would fight at 20 or 25 hmm. because like that was that's why like this camp i went in a tiny bit heavier mm -hmm. Not a ton, but like a few pounds extra because I thought I was going to be fighting at 25. I was like, yeah, just find me a fight. I yeah, At this yeah. point, I don't care. Eventually, I'll get to fight at 115. But if I have to fight to tw at 25 until I get to a big enough promotion that can find me a fight at 115, great. But when you're five foot eight, people don't want to fight you at 115 pounds. It's I'm literally going to be the tallest straw weight in history. Like... Nobody that, wants to is fight that real? That stat. That's a real stat. Look it up. Five foot, five foot eight is yep. the tallest straw weight. Look it up. How am I going to look that up? I don't even know how to I Google don't that. What are you... <laughs> but if you Google the tallest straw weight in UFC right now, it's five six. Oh, who's that? Mm -hmm. Do you know? It was. It's Ashley Yoder. But oh, two yeah. Ashleys. Okay. It's Yoder, and then I think Dern might be mm. five five. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but most of the girls are five five or below. Oh, so you're right. So then you're going in there, especially with your Muay Thai skills. You've got the long limbs. You've got the distance management, right? And you're just going to strike yeah. these girls to death. Yeah. That's... If I was a wrestler, they'd be like five eight, whatever. But I'm not a wrestler. Right. So they're like five eight. Yeah. No, I don't want to get kicked with those legs. That doesn't sound mm. like fun. I look like a praying mantis out there after I've cut weight. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fighting stance? Is that how it looks? Yeah. Have you ever seen Muay Thai fights? Yeah. Hmm. Nice, nice. I like it. I like it. It's kind of like a praying mantis. I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought you were doing the uh, the Australian breakdancing kangaroo uh, pose. Yeah. I didn't so know. That's, that's my uh, celebration dance afterwards. Alternate? So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. So, okay. But here's the thing. So, do you know if you're the very first ever Bellator strawweight fight? Uh, no, there have been a couple of one-offs. Like, oh, they'll, really? They'll do, yeah, they'll do one-offs every now and then, um, okay. just depending on who they have. They'll, okay. they'll be like, yeah, for sure, let's sign a fight at 115. But they don't have a class, so you can't like get ranked is the big thing. Okay, so here's the thing. Bellator has lied to the entire public, okay? Oh. Because when Bellator, when, Bellator, yeah, when Bellator merged with PFL... I, and I can find the quotes. It, it, they're out there. Peter Murray or Don Davis, whoever it was, said, 
every Bellator car, every Bellator Champion Series card, this is my impression, just like your Regan Gowing impression. Every Bellator card is going to have two championship title fights on every card because they only have six events a year. We're yeah. going to have two title fights every card. Guess what, Ashley? Good old Timmy B is on every PFL and Bellator post every time they post a Bellator card because there's one title on the line. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, where's your freaking champions? Like, where are they? So here's the thing, Ashley, your unsolicited advice from me oh. is after you win, mm -hmm. right? They cart the girl out you know, <laughs> right. and you're in there with the mic. You demand the title. Oh, demand the title. Just say, just say Bellator. I'm taking the strawweight title. There's supposed to be two title fights on every card. This was the second title fight. I am now the strawweight champion. Just As freaking the cut the promo. Fight? You're yeah, nuts. Too, who gives a crap? Look, okay. Rain, I mean, Rain, Rain comes from a WWE background. Okay, <laughs> she, she, and she announced at she announced at SummerSlam. Okay. Okay. Rain, don't they normally have like the intercontinental title in the first match a lot of times on a pay per view? They used to. Yeah, sometimes they do. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What are you going to disrespect Shawn Michaels and the. <laughs> like, no, you just say, you grab the mic and you go, I am now the Strawweight Champion. And then just make a promo of it and see what happens. Cut that promo and then do the kangaroo dance. And then do the kangaroo dance. Yeah. There you go. I'm <laughs> down for the dance. Like, the rest of it's just icing on the cake. No, I'm um, telling you, actually, what are they going to do? You go out there and you just demand a title. Blast me and on Instagram everywhere. They're going to be like, who is this crazy no, person? And no, then because I get to fight other straw weights. I like where your head's at. They need attention. They need they need the drama. They need the excitement. They need someone like you with a personality to make people watch and make people get excited. You're in your hometown. The crowd's going to be going crazy. Mm -hmm. The dead yeah. bodies behind you. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was, I, I was actually trying to practice how to do like a flip over her body after the you know what i mean like mm, you do like nice. a, a flip but you do it over your opponent after you knock them out nice i like it yeah I like it. i'm working on it we'll see how that goes i might just <laughs> follow my face but that would be on instagram too and attention is attention either way either way <laughs> that's right yeah brain uh yeah no okay like seriously though think about it Okay. Talk about it with you know Visualize. your manager and whatever. Yeah, but talk about it with your manager. You're with Sucker Punch Entertainment, correct? I am. I am in fact. Good, good old Brian Butler. He's been on the podcast. I love that dude. He's, I mean, one of the best ever. Yeah. You know, see what yeah. he thinks. Like, hey, should I just call out for this strawweight title that doesn't exist? Why not? You know what I mean? It exists now. Yeah. Now that bring, I'm here. Bring your own belt. Be like uh you know Mike feel. Platinum Perry. Like yeah, you've got extras. Just bring yeah. one. I got some pretty ones. <laughs> Rain, uh, Ashley's the best. What do you want to? What do you want to ask? I know. So for me, I'm curious. So you mentioned earlier that you had a canceled bout, right? You were supposed to make your pro MMA debut debut back in uh, June, and then it got canceled. Yeah. And now looking back, do you actually feel like, man, that was that setback was actually a setup for this better opportunity that I have right now? Yeah, that could totally be a slingshot, you know. There are after that fight, there were a lot of people trying to find me a fight, like mm -hmm. a ton. A lot of incentives were sent out. So my name was in a lot of mouths. And that's probably one of the launch pads that helped me uh, ascertain this fight, besides the fact that Sucker Punch is awesome and that's <laughs> they definitely had a hand in helping me get onto this card. But I don't have any doubt that it contributed in some way and came full circle to allow me to have this big stage for my pro mm -hmm. debut. I think it's super important for us to have a stage as females in the sport, to have a stage in general and fights drop all the time. I feel like there should be a stat for how many female fights drop in comparison to male fights because mm -hmm. like females, we're a little fickle there. There's, we have different hormones. And so through, as the month goes out, you know, you could stub your toe and be like, no, my whole life is falling apart. I can't <laughs> fight. Like, and, and your brain is chemically dra dramatizing these things. And you wish that you had control over that. And sometimes you don't have the grit to just be like, no, I, I'm going to fight them at my worst. It doesn't matter if I'm at my best or not. A lot of people want to fight at their best. And if they're not at their best, they drop the fight. 
they figure out a reason and they drop the fight. And that's what I have unfortunately experienced for the last year. Cause yeah, that, that fight dropped. It wasn't the first one. It was just the one that was closest to actually happening. Mm. You know, I've had three or four fights drop in the last year and a half trying to find it. Last November was when I was supposed to debut. Oh, wow. So I, I've had, you know, that was like my third or fourth one where you're just like, yes, you have an opponent. Here's a contract. No, you don't have an opponent. Sorry. And you're like, I have nothing to show for all the work that I've done. Yeah. That's my that's... biggest motivator going into this. I cannot wait to actually showcase what I'm capable of. You don't, you're never allowed to go as hard as you want in sparring. You can never go full ham. You don't want to hurt your training partners. You don't want to knee people to the head. You don't want to teep people to the face. There are always rules, right? You're not throwing crazy back fists and jumping shit. Like you're not doing all of these things that as a showman in a ring, you might be doing. So I'm stoked to go be a showman and go throw some risky moves. Like it doesn't bug me at all. I finally get this opportunity. I'm not going to waste it. I, I, right yeah. I, this is going <laughs> to be such an easy podcast for me to cut promos and clips out of rain because everything she says is like it's like she's cutting promos so this is simple like <laughs> making, making my job a easy machine. yeah let's go uh, let's go <laughs> ashley i i've kept you much longer than i wanted to and i apologize but no like, it's my what fault. am i gonna do I'm the talker i already know <laughs> yeah you can't, no i know every podcast that i do goes over so it's not yeah. you at all no 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 and how dare you talk about other podcasts that you've done I, <laughs> they don't exist. I'm very sorry. rude. I didn't very, know very you were rude. so sensitive. I, I yeah. apologize. They're not as yeah. good as you. Yeah, okay? I am. That's, Thank you. Thank you very much. As good as you. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, before I ask you my last question that we ask all the um, guests of the podcast, I want to give you the stage to say, is there anything that you wanted to say to the fans, viewers, and listeners of the podcast, or you know, maybe to your friends or family that are watching? First of all, don't miss the show on September 7th. I'm the first fight of the night be there early because i don't think it's going to go all three rounds and so you're going to miss it if you don't show up on time that's the first thing second thing even if you are not accustomed to the fight world try it out man mm -hmm. we need especially if you're a girl <laughs> we need more women enthusiastic about this sport this is and a lot of instances it's a boys club and i'm going to tell you what us girls have more fun i haven't gone to many practices where i don't giggle at least once so if you want to be like a little giggle factory go join jujitsu those girls giggle all the time there's a me there's memes and instagram reels about it where people are where guys are like i'm gonna roll and i'm gonna be so strong and good at this and girls are like oh you submitted me <laughs> like <laughs> There, there's something that builds in terms of confidence and camaraderie as a female when you train this sport. You become a more whole version of yourself. You get in touch with your masculinity, which some of us desperately need. And for me, it gave me the freedom and confidence to get in touch with my femininity. Like mm. it just provides balance in a lot of senses. So please, please, please go join a combat sport. I promise that there are nice ways to do it. You don't have to spar to be in a combat sport. You can go kick a pad. Like, and these uh, the girls there at the gym will lift you up more. It's like being that drunk girl in the line at the club. Those are the <laughs> gym girls. Those are the gym girls that just want to tell you how pretty you are and how good your switch kick is and that you just need to keep going, sweetie. Like, Come, come into sports, come into combat sports. Um, I want to thank my sponsors, right? Uh, Bushido Ways, which provide me with all my amino acids. Uh, their amino acids actually have uh, methyl butyrate in them, which is helpful for muscle building. And then it, it has lion's mane as well, uh, active recovery, because I can't do like ibuprofen or anything like that, it tears up my stomach. But natural anti-inflammatories anti like lion's mane, 
definitely helps. And of course, your EAAs are super important to keep your muscles going throughout a workout. My wife is the person that has donated all of her time and money into me for the last 10 years. Uh, she is my everything. We've been together about eight years, actually. But she's cornered like 30 of my fights. She's my she's a nurse so she's always making sure that i'm patched up and can go into you know can go into the the ring in good spirits and i love her to pieces i would be nowhere without her my i know she's so sweet and then my my last shout out is going to be to my team because finding them i moved from fresno i started in fresno right over at three kings and I, I trained there for a good amount of years and did a lot of tournaments there. But when I got to steel, you know, the culture really clicked. And then I fine tuned a lot of the rudimentary skills that I had. And I think it made me lethal at a whole new level. So I'm internally grateful to Carl, my head coach over at steel, because he has the intelligence level and the dedication to athletes that I had, had been searching for. Uh, very fortunate to have found him. I feel like I lucked out. So steel. And then I also train at Alliance. That's my jiu-jitsu gym. Ooh. There's a bunch of females there. They're better top level world champions, right? That's where I train with Jenna a lot. I go in and I take her classes. Um, nice. And then my, oh, I lied. That wasn't the last one. The Coven, which is our little collective group of girls down here in San Diego, you know, led by team leader, Angela Hill, who provides a lot of helpful feedback for climbing in the ranks, you know, not just all of our skills on the mat, but off the mat as well. She's definitely a fantastic leader of that group that just brings together a diverse uh, types of women that have different styles and different weight classes. And we learn how to be comrades instead of, you know, against each other. I forget the word for that antagonators there you go yeah nice i know those long-winded sorry no it's perfect <laughs> it's amazing no look hey you've got you've got the mic skills down pat yeah. like you know what i mean i don't know who mike is Rick. but he can't take my skills no, mike sucks. <laughs> sorry had to throw one i mean I mean, I mean the comedy gold, Ashley, that you're spitting as well. <laughs> like my uh, medal? <laughs> oh, it doesn't stop. Ashley, I do want to ask you one final question. Sure. And uh, and it doesn't look, have to be. Here, yeah, okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. You're coming back on the podcast, just so you know. Oh. Like I'm, you know, it's you're coming mm. back. You've got the stamp of approval. Rain. I haven't asked Rain yet, but sometimes she's very <laughs> critical of our back. guests. Come back next <laughs> week. Give you're me okay with her? Pleasure, rain. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, here's the question. It's a question that my mom used to ask me almost every day of my life growing up. So I'm going to ask it to you, Ashley Whiplash Thiner on a scale of one to 10. How happy are you? Oh, 72. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. And any, I mean, you've already talked about all the wonderful things, but is there anything important to you that, that brings you happiness and, and like how you would be a 72 out of 10? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a culmination of... Mm -hmm all of the women that I get to be surrounded by every day and like my dogs, I freaking love my animals. Aww. They help. <laughs> how many, how many dogs, how many dogs? I have, I have two dogs, two cats. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh. I've got two cats and rain's got two dogs. Have two so. dogs. Oh, yeah. perfect. Look at us. Just a community of, yeah. of uh, what is it? We're the fur adults babies? of fur babies. Yes. Yeah. We were, we are fur parents. Fur That's parents. Yeah. We're, we're the parents of the sorry my carbs are a little low right now so. that's all right that's all right you're, you're killing it but no but yes. I, look ashley i'm super happy for you like you know you seem like mm -hmm. you're a good person you seem like you've got everything lining up so that this fight coming up on september 7th bellator champions series is going to be a fantastic night for you you're gonna kick ass i can't wait go oh, out the there Stronger arena wow yeah, it's a huge arena. Like I said, it's going to be the biggest stage that I've ever fought on. Yeah. Like, let's light up the house, man. I can't wait. And yeah. I'm definitely going to steal that mic. If you have ever seen one of my post-fight interviews for, like, my MMA fights, I I love 
after the fights, I love talking on the mic. I'm about it. I have so much energy through like flowing through my veins, even if the fight was super daunting. And it, as soon as I get that mic, it's, it's like a new wave goes through me. And then I can kangaroo my way to fame. Nice. Do it. Ashley, do not squander the opportunity. Never. Right? This is this is a huge moment for you on a huge scale. Where I'm mm-hmm. so happy to have met you. Boy, oh boy, Rain. Rain and I didn't do a podcast together last week. She left me alone with 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 a great guest, but now we're back and to have and to be back to with have Ashley. You. Oh yeah, this was a good one. This was a good way Thanks, to get our guys. energy back. I going. like you too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ashley. We could be in like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Ashley, thank you so much for joining the podcast. We will definitely see you again. Good luck. You will forever be a friend of the podcast. We'll always let people know what's up, but uh, we'll definitely have you back. I can't wait to hear everything that goes on in your career and your life, your your food company. When you start an Instagram, tag us and we'll follow you yes. and we'll promote the hell out of it. I got you. Thank you so right. much for having thank me. Thank you. See you later, Ashley. You, Ashley. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Rain. Oh, that's amazing. What a guest. Rain. I know. My God. My God. What a guest. Like, look, you never know. Right, you never know who these people are. You never know like what, what kind of personality they're going to be. But wow, I'm so excited to watch her fight, and I pray to God she takes my advice and demands that title. Like, right? Can you imagine? Yeah. Just do it, freaking Bellator. You're supposed to have two title fights. Just <laughs> give me a belt. Go get one for the back. Bring it in. Right? Like, no. Like you got to. You got. You got to. You know, make a statement and just and just light that house on fire. You're a San Diego. You're you're a San Diegan. No, what is the what is on. Uh, Ron Burgundy, well, what do you call it? San Diegoites, whatever the hell he, yeah, no. he said. But you know, like, yeah, no, no, you got to do it. Uh, Rain, we're running a little bit long, I guess. We're going to do some for a good reason. Pod- for a good reason. Oh, yeah, for of course. Yeah. Like, I, she said she was going to be on for four hours, but I didn't want to take up the full four hours. Uh, friends of the podcast update, I do want to say thank you to Rageworks Podcast Network. You can check them out at rageworksnetwork.com for other great audio podcasts like ours. Rain FLA 16 is right around the corner. That's Fight League Atlantic. That's where I am a commentator. It's a double header weekend on Saturday, Ooh. September 21st. There's Tapper Tag 3. Rain, it's getting crazy. Tapper Tag 3, there's an eight man tag team tournament. So the, it's tag teams in the cage. They release the rules. You have to be holding onto a rope, just like in WWE. Okay. They're they're tagging in and out in a BJJ. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I am commentating that, so it's going to be <laughs> insane. The tag team names are amazing. Like I said, Blue Tang Clan. Uh, they just came out with Broke Back Takers. Uh, there's the Road Warriors. Like they've got crazy names. The, the the people look good. You know, I'm excited for that. And then there's a, a four woman tag team tournament as well. That's going to be incredible. Go to fightleagueatlantic.com to get the tickets. And then in the evening, FLA 16 goes down. MMA card. Uh, ben Lease is on. Former guest of the podcast, of course, Mr. Entertainment Ben Lease. Abdel the Mummy, Abdel Aziz, he's on there. Cam Nelson, he's on there. Great, great stars from across Canada and beyond. And I can't wait to see that card. Fightleagueatlantic.com. September Rain. 21st, right? Yeah, September 21st. Get there. Do not miss it. FightLeagueAtlantic.com. Uh, what else do we got going on? I do have something. I'm going to open a package here, like an unboxing video. Ooh, like I'm a mold- Should I close YouTube? my eyes? No. <laughs> okay, I can see what's in this package, but I got this in the mail, and I want to see. I will give my real reaction, and then um, if it's, you know, if it's not good, then I won't say who sent it, and if it's good, I'll say who sent it. All right, hold on. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Actually, it's looking pretty good, so I'm happy. Okay, well, that's good. Might actually be good. That a shirt? Oh my god! Oh, it's a nice. It's a fight 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 shirt. shirt. Oh, it looks pretty good. Who sent you that? All right, not bad. Okay, so I can officially say that this is good. Oh, it's the shirt is nice quality. The printing is pretty good. Okay, this is from Millions.co. Wow. I had no clue whether this was going to be any good rain, and I was worried. Wow. But okay, you can get our shirts at millions.co. Wow, the official Fight and Sight t shirt now available yeah. at millions.co. Wow. So in the past, rain, I always did like orders, you know, yeah. and I would have to order like 50 like shirts or whatever at a time. Like, yeah. And kind of thing. But yeah, this is pretty good. Crap, That's this amazing. is good quality. 
Okay, and if you go to millions.co, I've put the price as low as I possibly could. I think it's like sixteen dollars. Okay, Canadian. I'm just like I don't. No, <laughs> U.S. Right. dollars. We're not okay. giving them away, Rain. Sixteen Canadian <laughs> dollars. It's like a nickel. Uh, yeah. So anyway, okay, there you go. The shirts are pretty good. Damn, millions.co. Thank you so much. That's wait. That's so you go awesome. on millions.co, and then what? You search for Fight Inside podcast. So go on millions.co, search for Fight Insight podcast, and there then you go. you'll go to the merch. All our podcasts are on there now, like ever since like maybe four weeks ago. I haven't been promoting it because I didn't know if the merch was going to be good, but the merch is good. So shit, let's go. So they're there. And then they make clips of the podcast and stuff. It's very, very cool. So I'm very happy. So that's all good. Uh, what else do we have to do? Oh, let me promote uh, UNF 20 coming up uh, yep. a week after FLA 16. Uh, yep. we, have, we still have tickets available at upnextfighting.com. Or you can check out our Instagram at upnextfighting. It's going to yeah, be a you know what you should do in Los Angeles. You should do the fight in sight destination experience. Go up to Ooh. Picto, Nova Scotia, watch FLA 16, and then go down on the 21st. 21st? September 21st? 28. 28. Sorry, okay, September 21st is me. Picto, mm -hmm. Nova Scotia, and then fly down to California and do the, the UNF. Yeah, on September 28th. Right, if you do both shows, Rain and I will give you an autograph for free. <laughs> Proof of purchase required. <laughs> Rain, there's only one more thing I want to talk about. And I, I kind of wanted to, uh, I was going to ask Ashley about this, but Ashley's still here. Ashley, why are you watching the podcast? Hold on. Bring her back in. Ashley, <laughs> Ashley why are you watching the podcast like there? Well, you're just so entertaining. Are you being... <laughs> Stop. Okay. Can I ask you one thing then? Since sure. you're there, I'm, I'm going to make it awkward now. This, this girl this girl hold on the, the one from china i just saw yeah. the joker the joker wang kong right <laughs> yeah yeah i just saw i literally just started looking at her stuff this week yeah like i didn't know who she was but then i saw that picture yeah. and then i started recent because she just made her debut right made her debut and wins she finished the, fight. the girl Finishes the girl in a minute, calls out Dana White after the fact because she didn't get a performance. And then he goes on Instagram and says, I'm going to send you 50000 because it was incredible. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Yeah, she was mad that she didn't get the bonus. You know, she was mad that she was on the undercard because she was on the prelims. She got mad about that, said, I'm, I'm a, a star. Kickboxer. She's a kickboxer mm -hmm. who has a win over Shevchenko, mind you, in 2015. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay, I heard so, that. I mean, 2015. Uh, is she the next big thing that's well, not named Ashley Finer? <laughs> I'm not going to make an uneducated guess. That doesn't sound like me at all. But I, don't know. I mean, strikers, I think, are the next big thing. And it, and she's a striker. Uh, yeah. So I definitely think she's going to be a contender in some aspect because she's going to be exciting to watch. Rain, did you watch the fight? Yeah, I did. I was actually like shocked like the fight was over. I was like, what, what? It's over now? <gasps> I mean, she's got the style. Mm -hmm. She's got the charisma. Now, I didn't watch the fight live. I watched it back on Fight Pass. Does she speak English? I think she had a translator, if I'm not uh, mistaken. You got to learn English. Wang I have to Kong. double check it, but I think she did have a translator. Okay, okay. She's got to learn English. If she learns English, skyrocket this chick. Right. Right? A lot of good, a lot of good athletes coming out of China now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they're not because UFC is not using USADA anymore. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Was. Okay, I see what you did there. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. I mean, yeah, like, look, the world it it, it grows, right? The sport grows, mm -hmm. right? Probably in China and stuff like that. Like women's MMA wouldn't have been a thing, but then when no, you get people anything. like Zhang Weili, yeah, right. When you get Zhang Weili, when you get uh, Mulan Wu Yan, and and all those all the fighters, it slowly just starts building, right, in the teams. Yeah. Like you said, when you're your promo telling all women to go to a gym, right? Like that's what happens, right? The more the more that happen, the more that they see it, the more they see it as an option. But uh, yeah. Rain, your thoughts on her, on Joker? On Joker? No, I love it. Like I yeah. said, like I was watching uh, prelims live and like I didn't think the fight would be over that quick. It's yeah. like one minute and two seconds, yeah. round number one. I was like, what? It's over? Um, and for it to be like the first fight of uh, the prelims, I believe, 
uh, to me, that was just a huge statement, which is why I always tell people, do not miss the prelims. Do not no. miss the prelims. Yeah. yeah, I think it's an exciting development in terms of what style we're going to start seeing more of because we need more strikers. We need the high-level strikers to start coming into MMA. And the yeah. fact that we just snagged another one, yeah, and th it. and no, and that's the thing too because it's like like people are saying that she's the Alex Pereira of mm. of of sure. Izzy, you know what I mean? Of Shevchenko, yeah. of course Shevchenko doesn't even have the title, but okay, fine, right? But yeah, you get this big person with a with a with a background, with a skill set, an exciting skill set. Now, mind you, I just want to say, you know, going into that fight, her opponent was one in three in her last four, right? Nine and six total, like. You know, they were kind of giving her someone that you might be able to put on a show for, I feel, sure. maybe, you know, but whatever. Yeah, that's the way that's the way the marketing fights. machine works. Yeah. yeah. And and anything can happen. But mm -hmm. uh, puts on a great show. I like mm -hmm. the Joker mm -hmm. makeup. I like the whole persona. I like the the, the bravado of her. You know what I mean? There's personality yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Marketable. Marketable. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, Ashley, we're going to say goodbye to you again because yeah, now we're going to end. The, now we're going to end the podcast, though. So okay, but rain. I'm going to watch just in case. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to say anything that might be risky, and then I'm going to have to send you hate mail or something. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. did say that Rain likes to say mean things about their your guests. Yeah, you did normally, tell me that. Yeah, before somewhere. I'm just yeah. <laughs> All right, goodbye, Ashley. Bye. Right, see you. Bye. Uh, Rain. Oh, that's funny. That's so funny because I start because you know why? Because it, this this Wang Kong is like she's blowing up the internet now. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other thing I like is that these stupid MMA people on on Instagram and whatever they always use the clown emoji, right? When they just can't, <laughs> when they can't articulate their opinion, you know, often against me because I'll say something that's not like the same as everybody else and they'll uh, just send me clown emojis right and like well screw you guys now the clown emoji means wang kong so yeah right she's taking over that emoji she's kicking ass i don't know i'm pretty excited for it i know but, me too. but i would say learn english learn english if you're if you're her manager if you're her handler whatever like i want to look it if up if you're now. the ufc if you're the ufc send her a a, a uh, English teacher immediately so that this girl can market herself like crazy because it took so long for uh, Wang Zhe, uh, Zhang Wei Li to speak English, right? Now she kind of does. And it's so cool when she does. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just a little bit to interact with the crowd. I feel like it's very important. You know? She's got yeah. the style. She's got everything, man. She's kicking ass. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, I think even with the language barrier, I feel like because of her personality, it still comes out there. I do I agree that, you know, obviously, um, if she's able to just kind of like speak to us in English and most people would yeah. understand, it would be a lot better. However, you know, I, I feel like just like by looking at her, yes. like the personality comes out, you know, now like you have like yeah. the Joker face. I mean, the fight skills alone speak for her. Right, so, right. No matter what, I think she's going to be like a big star in the UFC. Yeah. And if you can lay on a striking clinic like that in the next couple fights, it's going to be really good. I think she's currently undefeated, right? If I'm not mistaken. I think. Hold on. Let me see, let me see. I got it right here. Yeah. She's she's undefeated Six right and now. 6-0. Yeah. 6-0. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Road to UFC. Had a win there. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, she beat Mulan Wu Yanan. That's the girl that I like in, in UFC. She hasn't fought in forever, though, but she beat her in 2024. Oh, I guess she doesn't fight in the UFC anymore. Uh, and then, yeah, whole, you know, yeah, kick ass, man. Go out there, make a name for yourself, kick ass, just like Ashley Finer is going to. You know what I mean? You got, yeah. you, you got to put on the show, put on, put on the performance, and then just, like, bust through because that's what's exciting. Rain, uh, I think that is it for the podcast because we're running a little bit late. No, we're like perfect on time. We'll, cut the, on time. we'll cut the intro. We'll record that. Uh, yeah. Look, last week, if you did not watch the podcast, because people are going to be here now because of Ashley Finer, right? So if you didn't watch the podcast last week, go check out Rain. I interviewed a former district attorney candidate from Santa Clara County in California. Mm. 
he was a district attorney in the exact county or sorry a district he's a prosecutor in the exact county where Cain Velasquez got in trouble for what he did and we interview I interviewed him all about what his plea for no contest meant what it meant for jail time what it meant for vigilantism in the United States like it was a crazy cool interview and that guy was such a cool interview too right and I'm so upset that you missed it he was a great guy and I can totally see why he's a prosecutor because like he had the ability to speak and articulate what he wanted to he spoke eloquently on the topic very professional great great dude I couldn't believe he did it so well, that's amazing check it out if you want to know anything if you want to mm -hmm. educate yourself in any way that's the podcast to watch. Like it was really, really good. I was very happy. And then after they uh, listen to that, they go back to this episode. Then watch this one again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because then you can sandwich the comedic fun of this one with the with the education of the second one, you know. But yeah. Rain, look, I'm so happy with that shirt from millions.co. So thank you, millions.co. Yeah, this is cool, man. And now I don't have to take orders anymore. They just do it. So you just go to millions.co, they print it and send it out to you. And it was fast. Like I'm talking. A week and a half, maybe. You live in my Canada, car. like they. And I'm in Canada, so they had to send it through like an Eskimo to get okay. here. You know what I mean? Like very, very fast shipping, and the shipping was very cheap. So I can only assume in America, like the shipping must be extremely fast and and yeah. even cheaper. So yeah, no, that is very cool. I'm very happy about that because my my fight and sight shirts are dying. Like they they've been in the wash way too many times. Uh, <laughs> so I needed new ones. So rain. That's it. We're out of here. That was a great podcast. Ashley Thiner, very, very exciting. Um, yeah. I just want to say that whoever took uh, Ashley's uh, Stanley uh, cup. Oh, yeah. Give it back to her. What a dirt bag. <laughs> right? Like, what's wrong with you? You obviously know Sorry. that's not your, you obviously know that's not your cup. You're probably listening to the podcast right now. Give it back to her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Rain, we're out of here. My screen is frozen. Is your I know you're frozen? frozen, but at least you're oh, smiling. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze oh. frame. Okay. Well, then you froze and now I'm in a worse position. Okay. Guys, we're out of here. Thank you so much, Rain. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.